support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. We are going to mix it up a little bit on this segment today. Uh, we're going to be answering questions, or I'm going to be answering questions that I've been accumulating lately via email. Yes, been getting them from all over the country, and yeah, I don't, you know, I, I'm not including any from overseas right now because there's just so many emails to go through. Uh, if you want to ask me a question, it's real easy. Insane, or no, wait. Info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. I almost forgot my own email address there. You can send in the questions, and I'm thinking maybe oh, once a month or so, I'll uh, do a little video uh, and uh, a segment over on Spotify and iTunes uh, answering those questions for you. I think, in, you know, a different change of pace a little bit for a segment, even though there is a lot of biker news happening, but uh, that's just going to have to wait to the next segment because because again, these damn emails are piling up. It's like they come from e everywhere. And uh, one thing is if I don't get back to you right away, just know there's a lot to go through, man. I can't hit everybody. As much as I try, I do try to get to them. <laughs> uh, anyway, as you've seen earlier at the start of the show, our new support store is is up and ready to go got a lot of cool products over there uh we got embroidered hats pound rock on and yes it was trademarked so don't try stealing it on me jerkies yeah i trademarked that sucker uh under the insane throttle biker news brand uh so we got embroidered hats i even got an embroidered backpack and you know what me i'm really in the freaking high tops man and i couldn't believe it i got my own freaking design for high tops now so go over there check it out we got sweaters the whole nine yards so let me pop into some questions right now and let's get this show on the road as they say okay this one is from michigan uh yeah that's another thing when you email make sure you put what state that you're in that way i can uh let people know uh first question is what do you say to people who claim that you are putting out club business i say you're full of crap that's what i say listen everything that i cover is in the public domain it's not like uh, I got some secret stuff, you know, people are telling me that I put out on the internet. Now, when I do off the record conversations, yeah, I know a lot more that's going on, but I don't put it out there because I believe when you say it's off record and you give your word that it's not going to be put out on the radio, that you shouldn't do it. But, you know, for people that are claiming, well, you know, when you do the biker news, you're talking about this club or that club. Again, they're in mainstream media. A lot of places where I get the information actually comes off of a news wire. A news wire, you know, either, either Reuters or AP, which is Associated Press, that's where I'll look for it. I don't like going to, uh, how can I say it, unconfirmed sources. There's a lot of blogs that do that. That. There's even a biker news site that's ran by an Israeli freaking security officer cop. And people don't even realize because they don't do their background on uh, where they get their stuff. So I make sure I go to mainstream sources. Uh, now, when I, it's not like I'm covering the story. I'm actually giving you, uh, you know, my opinions as I'm putting the story out there. Because if you looked at another video where, uh, somebody said well all you do is read the news you know anybody can do that well a lot of people don't have time to do that and that's where our uh show comes in is hey 
We're going to give you the news. And this is what I think about it. What about you guys? What do you think about it? You know, it's about getting the discussion going and it's about trying to make uh, the lifestyle a lot better, you know, improve it. So, no, I don't put club business out there, you freaking schmuck, whoever has that. You know, not, uh, you know, the question per se, uh, but a lot of people do try to say that crap. And it's like, dude, all you have to do is, you know, open up a freaking newspaper and you, well, not newspaper, but, you know, read a news website, you'll see the story right in front of you. So it's like, you know, they want to project their anger on somebody like us for bringing it to the forefront but it's not our fault that you're in there you know <laughs> it's not my fault <laughs> so it, it, the easiest way of doing stuff is don't do it don't put yourself on the front page uh two and this one uh what's it from iowa why did you decide on doing a new style platform and are you considered media well, we are registered uh, a part of uh, the Online News Association, which is a real big association. Uh, a lot of uh, reporters are peep, uh, body award winners on there. Yes, I got a lot of contacts through the media. Uh, you know, sometimes I use those contacts when I see a story. You know, I try to get them to put out the other side of the story, but a lot of motorcycle clubs don't want to talk to the media. And I don't freaking blame them at all for not talking to the media because most of the times what the media does is they only take law enforcement side of uh, the story and don't want to give the clubs a real chance unedited to put their story out there. One of the other things that we do other than, you know, give opinions on what's going on in the news is we'll give the opportunity to clubs to come on the show, give their side of the story and the whole nine yards. You guys have uh, heard that a lot. You've seen it, everything from confederations to one percenter clubs, everything. They come on and give their side of the you know the story what got me into doing a new style platform is i knew there was a need for it you know a lot of people they'll only see it and that's where it ends that's not where a new story ends to me there's always follow-ups there's always an angle there's always something going on behind the scenes and that's kind of what i like pulling out and giving the people and besides that i'm a news freak you know i believe if you educate yourself on what's going on with the people that don't like you that you're all the better you know their place so that's one of the main reasons i got into the news style stuff uh, and I think I got a question uh, of coming up about this, but I'll go on and say it now. I'm not into, and I've said it a million times, I don't believe in the protocol stuff. I don't believe in, uh, you know, this is the way things are, this is the way things are. Uh, there's, you know, that's just not my style, and that's just not the angle that I come from. Uh, so that's my answer on that. You know, I love uh, educating my mind. Uh, three what do many of the clubs in the motorcycling world think about your news coverage well simple so and this is where it from mississippi some like it and some don't <laughs> you can never please everyone uh people wonder do you get i get threats all the time man uh that's just the game that's how it works uh but some like it some don't and i can see why you know you wouldn't want uh if something happened over here it being amplified within the lifestyle uh but you know that's what we do is the media portion of it stuff uh let's see here arizona would you ever consider doing a members only chat on your platform uh well we don't got a members only per se uh you know maybe we can work something out for you where uh i think we can do it through youtube or facebook well you know i can't do it on the radio section that's in our wheelhouse's radio 
Uh, but I think I can get something going. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Members only. Uh, we can do, uh, I don't know, like $5 a month or something. And maybe hold a, a Zoom chat with all the memberships. Uh, but that's something I got to look into uh, as far as members only type of deal. Uh, you know, the $5 donation will probably play, pay for, you know, the platform that I would have to do it on. I don't know yet, uh, but I can look into that. Also, have you ever considered doing a patch? No, I'm not doing patches. I'm not into that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, I just don't, you know, it's just too close to motorcycle club stuff. And I'm not into that. That's why we got the shirts. Get yourself a shirt, man. Rock on. Pound rock on, you know. Uh, get one of them if you're into that. Also, we got the hats and stuff like that. If that's the way you want to support the show, that's the best way of doing it. So, no, I'm not going to get into the patches. Maryland. You often talk about how some other creators are given information that shouldn't be put out there. Are you not doing the same thing again? And you know that goes to the and that's Maryland. That goes to the first question: uh, What do you say to people who claim you're putting out uh, club business? I'm not putting out their business, man. It's right there in the newspaper, uh, you know. <laughs> and my stuff is news based. It is not based on somebody saying, "Oh, well, how do I join a motorcycle club?" Or how do I do this with a motorcycle club? The only way you're going to learn that kind of stuff, the only way, you're, you might hear somebody, you know, talking about, well, this, you got to do this, or you got to do this, or well, why do you got to do you're not going to learn it on the internet, man. And I'm not bashing them platforms, so please don't think I am. I'm not bashing them. You know, there's a niche for that stuff. There's people that want to hear and see that stuff. Well, cool. Go ahead. You know, this is America. But my beliefs are you have to go up to a club member. You got to hang around with the club to learn that kind of stuff. Because everything is freaking locally, man. It, it's not national. It's not worldwide. You got stuff that happens here in the United States that... People in Australia, England, all of them are like, damn, man, you know, you know, that's just white onlys or black onlys. You got a lot of mixed stuff in a lot of big one percenter clubs overseas. It's a whole different culture over there. So, you know, again, I'm not bashing anybody, but I believe you got to go out there, party with people. You got to go out and hang with people to learn that type of stuff. Uh that's just the way I think. Uh, Kentucky, why do you favor a radio platform instead of, let's say, uh, what is that? Moto vlog or live action? I started as a creator in radio. I started on, uh, what was it, uh, Spreaker, and then uh, expanded to iTunes. I think it's called something else now, Apple Podcast or something. And then uh, iHeartRadio, and it just blew up. That is our main platform. Uh, the reason why I like that is uh, the guy who actually got me into it was uh, Good Time Charlie. And he used to give me some, you know, pointers here and there. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Oh, sorry for the cutoff. I had to get in the mid-roll with Kara. Whew, she's hot. I'm going to get me a poster one of these days. But anyway, yeah, good time Charlie would give me uh, some pointers here and there. He never thought I'd get into the news business, though, man. But that was my niche, uh, or my niche, as they call it. I was never into, you know, the radio DJ type of stuff. I've had offers. Uh, you know, people watch my show. I've had offers from a AMFN type of deals, but you know, again, I'm not gonna be muzzled by anybody <laughs> to say the least. Um, let's go to Delaware here. What's Delaware have to say? There are rumors that you are indeed in a motorcycle club 
If you are, then why not just say you are Delaware again? Uh, I'll neither confirm or deny that. And the reason why is because that's my personal business. What you're seeing and hearing uh, from my show is just that. My show is separate from my personal life. Yeah, I'll talk about things here or there or, you know, give you some keys over on Instagram and stuff to what I'm doing. Uh, but when it comes to uh, my work and my personal stuff, it's just nobody's business, man. It's It, it ain't. And I'm not going to sit here and say yes. Or I'm not going to sit here and say no uh, because uh, you don't need to know. <laughs> that, you know, the, the guy asks if you are, then why not just say you are? Uh, so that's the best answer I can give to that. I'm not going to be one of them creators. Not going to be one of them creators that represents a club or talks about their club or shows images in their uh, studios or whatever the hell they're doing of their club. It's just not me. Uh, that's a conflict. Uh, I believe I try to cover everybody the same. I try to do it. Do I have some biases? Yes, but I always make sure I try to give, uh, you know, all clubs, all clubs, uh, their opportunity to put out their uh, side of the story. And for people to know that question, it just it doesn't bring anything to the conversation. I believe uh, it doesn't do the show any good. So uh, that's my answer to that question. No, I'll never answer that one. That's you know just my personal life man and this is my job you know the two have to be separated or the show will never be freaking uh, successful eight why do you have such an archaic view towards women in the motorcycling world i don't think it's that archaic you know you just got to remember i was raised uh by vietnam vets they had a whole different attitude uh about club life motorcycle in life uh then the new jacks do i call it and new jacks i usually call you know the younger generation because they have a whole different ideology than what we do you know a lot of these guys uh creators whatever you have to say are uh, the younger ones they would have been freaking their eyes would have been popping if they came up in our my time or even the time of the vietnam vets because you'd get the hardcore story what it was uh, about being a biker or a motorcycle club member say during the 70s 80s and 90s it was a lot more hardcore than it is right now and you got to remember with women there's been a lot of club wars and a lot of guys that went to prison a lot of guys that got killed because a woman couldn't shut her freaking mouth and i'm not trying to be a you know an an ass towards it but it's just the truth you know, women where you're in the corner, don't get involved in our conversation or you're on the back of a bike. And that's just the way it was. You know, a lot of people don't understand. This is a man's world. No matter what somebody tries to tell you, it's a man's world. And I think it's always going to be, yes, you got motorcycle enthusiasts, you got women that ride bikes, which, hey, it's cool. I think it's actually kind of sexy now, you know, but ask me that in the 90s is like, you know, I'd look at your cross-eyed and say, what the hell is she doing on a bike? What, you don't got no balls? And the sad part of that is a lot of men nowadays don't have any balls. <laughs> it's like... The woman ripped it out of the pants, put it in the purse, and they're like, yes, honey, yes, honey. I really can't see how a woman uh, is attracted to something like that. Who wants to be attracted to a bitch? <laughs> you know, just let me put that out there. Who wants to be attracted to one? You know, there's already one female in the house. Why is she going to want another one? Uh, but that's just, again, the way I was raised. But there has been a lot of trouble when it comes to women. Uh, I actually do stories where 
Women are were involved, and you know, yeah, there's some badass women that are, you know grab a pool coup and get in there with you, but it's not their place to do that stuff, you know. Uh, so that's my answer on that. If you think I'm archaic, I guess I'm freaking archaic. But you know, us fellow chauvinist pigs out there, give me a pound rock on on that one. Uh, let's see here. As a law enforcement officer, this is Montana. Why do you hate cops so much? You know, I wouldn't say hate, but I don't like hypocrites. I always believed there was a line down the center you didn't cross. If you wanted to be a cop, you'd be a cop. If you wanted to be a biker, you'd be a biker. And that was said by a great one percenter. I do not see how you can go and call somebody a criminal or say this organization's a criminal for the actions of a few and then next thing you know you're going out on a bike with a three-piece patch see single patch two uh, patches and a third actually meant something back then now most nowadays it's not like that it's a whole different thing <laughs> whole different thing uh than it used to be hold on a second here i'm doing this real quick uh but growing up you know i was in the gang stuff and then in the club stuff and i seen exactly the way some of the street cops were I actually had a friend that he was pulling out and a cop slapped the back of his freaking trunk. Next thing you know, he's being arrested and we seen the guy slap the trunk. Being arrested for aggravated assault uh, on a police officer with a vehicle and he's doing 10 years in the joint for that. And cops wonder why people are upset with him. Then, you have the situation going on in the United States right now. Again, do I back the one movement? No, I don't. Uh, I believe it's a leftist extreme thing. And now, you know what? Other blacks will tell you the same thing. Uh, are there good cops? Yeah, there's good cops, but there's a lot of bad cops. And we highlight that in the Wall of Shame with Corey Graff. You know, he does a really good job with that Wall of Shame. And we highlight crimes that law enforcement does that they try to blame the same thing on one percenters. Is that hypocritical? I would have to say yes. That's very hypocritical. You can't do that. You're, you're held to a different standard because you take an oath. But when, like that Kentucky study out of, uh, what is it, Bluegrass State University, something like that, uh, actually Motorcycle Profiling Project has that study where there's a ton of cops ton of them it's like 20 to 1 or something compared to what one percenters do and cops say well we got more cops than there are bikers so that study bull you're a different standard man a way different standard <laughs> So I guess it's, you know, it's not hate, but I don't ever cross that line. But nowadays, you know, I never thought I'd see bikers actually, you know, suck on a pecker of a cop, man. And you got a lot of clubs that do that. Uh, you know, Alliance of Law Abiding Bikers. <laughs> I talk about that sometimes, man. Uh, I would never thought that a motorcycle club would join such an alliance like that. There's, that's their alternative to NCOM. But you got to ask yourself, what do they do besides pull each other's peckers, man? Because they sure ain't into biker rights. They sure ain't out there fighting for you. And they sure the hell ain't fighting for uh, motorcycle profiling because they're the ones doing it. But give me a break here. You know, the other day I just did the story on the thin blue uh, line uh, motorcycle clubs. They lost three members, two from Niles, you know, right outside of Chicago. Nine were injured. And even though they were cops, you still got to give your sympathy out because they died on a motorcycle. And it was really close to what happened in New Hampshire. This guy was drunk, crossed the line, killed him. 
Just like that New Hampshire crap. Crossed the line, killed him because he was doped up. So I don't think it's really hates. You know, it's just you stay on your side. I'll stay on mine. No, I'm not going to have a beer with you. No, I don't want to sit there and take showers with you. You're just not my gig, man. You know, I come from the belief, hey, I'm a biker. You're a cop. You stay over there. And I don't want to be a cop. <laughs> That's why I don't like rats so much. Uh, let's see here. Why did you decide to become a content creator? I think one of the biggest reasons why I decided to get into it is because when I, you know, in the 90s, we didn't have any news, man. The internet, in the, especially in the beginning, wasn't there. So the only thing you heard was local news, what's going on in the streets. You heard rumors of what's going on nationally. Maybe the news covered it. But we had to wait for Easy Riders to come out. God, did they screw up with Easy Riders. It's not even a biker magazine to me anymore. It's more of a glamour type of deal. Uh, or we had to wait for Biker Magazine, Outlaw Biker. I really love that. Just to hear about what events were going on or rallies. See, that's why... I liked rallies back then because it was word of mouth. It wasn't these big corporate freaking deals. Yeah, we knew about Sturges. We knew about Daytona. But again, they were you know quite different back then. They weren't so corporate uh, than they are now. So, But we never got to hear anything. So that's why I decided to do the content creator. I talked to Charlie a little bit, and he gave me the you know, the skinny on how to get everything going, what equipment I needed, and I decided on radio, again, I talked about that earlier, why, uh, yeah, I dabble in video now, because people like seeing the show being recorded, uh, they also like talking on all the chat platforms, so I think I wanted to be able to help the biker community out especially now using the internet as a tool and in the right way the internet's a great thing i you know what you can meet people on there you can go meet up for rides doing stuff you usually wouldn't have done before but if it's used the wrong way that's when it stinks you know and the another reason i got in the video is because if you're gonna do the news or you're gonna be out there talking about stuff people need to see you you know, there's a lot of people that hide behind these profiles. It's like, dudes, are you guys really that much of bitches that you can't say who you are? If you believe in what you're saying, then why do you have to hide? I never got that. Never got it. I think they're cowards. They're big time cowards. If you gotta hide, so I wanted to make sure that I was out there, people seeing me, and that's just like motorcycle rallies. I guess that's the only time you can really call us hardcore press is when I cover motorcycle rallies, even though that we haven't been able to do many of them because of what's going on now with COVID and a damn clutch cable. Hey, Harley, this is another segment. I still haven't got my parts yet. Anyway, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I like getting out there and covering them a different way than say Easy Rider back then would have covered it. They didn't cover it from the angle of the true way the biker life was. You know, yeah, they cover rub stuff. Yeah, they're drinking, partying, doing these games. But I like getting behind the scenes of stuff. So that's my answer on that. Again, if you want to ask me questions, maybe I'll do this uh, once a month or so away from uh, the biker news stuff. That way, you know, you get some uh, straight honest answers from me and that's what I believe is being straight up I really appreciate those who sent me the questions in hopefully I was able to answer them for you uh, so don't forget uh, our daily biker news every morning all the way up to Saturday Sundays you know you got to give me a break sometimes man we work hard over here uh, don't forget to visit our support store as well as Spotify, iTunes, and all that good stuff. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene?
we have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!